Welcome. Welcome to our online teaching with the net of light. And today we're going to uh, begin to pass on to you uh, the way of working, what the grandmothers call a template for really anchoring this return of the sacred connection between the human family and the divine, between the human family and all forms of nature and all levels of being. So that from this time on, as we do this work with the grandmothers, we will be working at every possible level concurrently. What that will do will swell the amount of love, power, uh, communion that we will all share together. And it will dissolve to a great degree any uh, leftovers of separation, any feelings of separation that you may have or that anyone may have of feeling separate from one another, feeling separate from the divine, feeling separate from nature. Because the good news is, and the real news is, there's no separation between you or me and nature. We are part of nature. Human beings are not separate. We are part of that. And so today what will happen is the one love will be able to express itself more through us. With the grandmothers, uh, in the years that they've been teaching us, they have moved us bit by bit by bit. They have moved us farther than I ever imagined. And I know we're not done yet, so it's going to keep going. Uh, I've mentioned this before. They began to teach us how to go beyond uh, space so that we could connect with people anywhere at any time. They then began to teach us to go beyond time so that we could connect with those who are no longer with us physically on earth and those who are yet to be born, that all of that became just part of this now moment. Uh, they've taught us to work with all forms of the divine and told us about the return of God the mother, the return of the feminine principle back to earth the return of the feminine principle throughout our cosmos and how we as individual human beings could help anchor that truth and bring that balance of masculine, feminine, female, male back again. They've done all of that. And now in the last couple of years, they've been pushing us, guiding us, urging us and scooting us forward to interact with nature in all her glory. And we do that, of course, through our connection with God the Mother, Mother Nature, Mother Earth, the Earth Mother herself. And so we are part of this growth, this activity of grand expansion that's taking place on Earth now at the same time, all of this crazy disintegration of all of our human systems are taking place. So as you look around you and you see all these institutions, uh, governments, uh, ideas, ideals falling down, that is happening. The old must go because it's not working, it is not serving the force of life. And we are part and aligned with, filled with, filling with the force of life. And so it's good to remember every time you possibly can, what's really going on here. It looks like hell on earth, the stuff that's happening. And it does look that way, however, all of that muck has to rise to the surface and it's doing it now so that life can bloom again. And it will bloom in us and through us and with us. And that's the great joy. So 
We're going to work today with the net of light as we always do, and we'll start there and then we'll go forward. Our job is as communicators and those who hold a state of communion with one another and with the divine and with nature. And so now we move into the next phase of this work. We begin by thinking of the net of light and just think the thought and experience it all around you, above you, below you, and stand today in your place on the net of light where two of those strands come together. Stand there and let the light radiate out from you and it comes back into you with your breath. It goes out, blessing all life. With the intake of your breath, more radiance pours into you. And as you stand there, observe throughout the world this endless variety of life throughout all the kingdoms of life, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdoms, uh, the spiritual kingdoms, all, all kingdoms of life. There's variety, beauty, richness in our being on every level. And now be aware as you stand and observe of the fabric of light that holds it all together, how your heart is connected with my heart, how our hearts are connected with the core heart of the trees, how the waters are radiantly connected with us and with the trees and with the animals and how the great beings who exist on all levels, the holy ones, are connected and infusing more and more light into this earth, into this cosmos and into this individual self. Everywhere there is this rhythmic breathing of light, sending it out just with your thought, it goes, breathing it in again with your thought, it comes into you, blessing, giving and receiving, and how much you have expanded as you've done this work, how large and full your heart is, how happy you are to give and to receive. The massiveness of your placement in this fabric of all. This itself, this recognition begins to set the template we'll be working in. And as you experience this great, great oneness and your place in it, your very, very expanded place in it, say goodbye now to any thoughts or feelings of inferiority and or weakness that you may have had. Those are old conditionings, old factors that have no basis in truth. So you really can safely and happily say goodbye to them. They're actually counter to who you are. They're lies, they're not you. And hanging on to them prevents you from experiencing your own expansion and your own greatness. And as you breathe in this way, being willing to say, yep, I'm ready to let go of all that old stuff that's held me back. It doesn't serve me. And so I'm ready to let it go. It goes, it begins to dissolve and you feel yourself breathing and being breathed by light, radiant and full of radiance. And from this place of fully lit consciousness, call on the grandmothers and call on the ancestors of the light. We make this radiant contact available 
each time we call on the ancestors of the light. That way, all those who've gone before us can also experience this great love and goodness. And it's effortless. So just breathe in this oneness. And don't worry about trying to understand all this. Just experience what you experience. You understand well enough. And the true assimilation of wisdom happens way beyond the mind anyway. So just rest. Rest in your own being now. Breathe and rest. Rest and breathe. And now I'm going to ask Catherine if she would read the grandmother's commitment to the earth for all of us now. Great. Thank you, Sharon. Commitment to the earth. Together with the grandmothers, all forms of the divine and the ancestors of the light we take our place in the net of light. We bow in gratitude to Mother Earth and give thanks for her endless love and patience with us. We bless the ground under our feet and ask Mother Earth to draw us into full harmony with her. In the past, many of us have lived as though we were distant from our mother, but today we recognize that we are her own and she is our own. We declare our sacred connection to earth and heaven and affirm that we are held from below as well as from above. Because we live our lives within the great net of light, we are an intrinsic part of the one love. Grateful for the bond we share with our human, animal, plant, and mineral family, we salute the sky, the earth, the waters, the fire of life, space, and everything that lives. We bow to the divinity present in every part of our beloved planet. Because we are part of the net of light, we are always held within the one love. This enables us to be instruments of healing so that from wherever we sit, stand, or move, the power of love radiates. We ask now to be pure vessels of love, to be a walking blessing upon the earth. A walking blessing upon the earth. That's what you are. Thanks, Captain. Okay, so what we're going to do now is begin to work with the elemental kingdom of life, with the elemental spirits who channel light down into the plants, the animals, the rocks, the soil, the air, uh, the space around us. They work intimately with the elements of life, which comprise our bodies and which comprise everything around us. And so we're gonna to begin to work with them now. And we have been cut off from them for a very, very long time. Told that thinking about uh, devas, thinking about uh, leprechauns, thinking about uh, dryads, naiads, salamanders, thinking about Ninahunis, thinking about any of these things and many more is pure nonsense and children's fairy tale material. However, this is a time to take a look at those prejudices. They are prejudices. We were taught them and taught to prejudge anything that had to do with working with the elemental kingdom. The grandmothers say, However, you cannot afford this anymore. Now is the time when you are in crisis. Humanity has brought the earth and all life on her 
to crisis. And the only thing that can save you now is nature herself. And so we must learn how to work with her. It's not gonna be about brain minding it ourselves and trying to figure out everything in a little rational order and put it into boxes. That has failed and will continue to fail. There's something bigger happening. There is a rising rhythmic flow coming from the earth herself. And those of us who are interested in this, who have an open mind and an open heart can begin to work now with nature. And so each of you has the opportunity now to establish a team to work with where you can be with nature, communicate with nature and learn mainly, mainly how to listen to nature. So what we're gonna do is you will be calling in or asking the grandmothers to call in your team. So first of all, I wanna tell you just a little bit about, a little bit more about the nature spirits. And I know very little about this, but the grandmothers assure me, I know enough to help you start moving to do this work if you want to. So we're just gonna jump in. Um, there are people who've written books and studied this uh, much more than I, and please feel free to, to refer to any of them. I think right now of Michael Rhodes uh, from Australia, who's written some great books about working with nature spirits. And I also think about Michelle Wright of the Paralander Garden in Virginia, who's written a great deal about this. Our job, however, with the grandmothers, as I mentioned before, is communication and holding communion. So this we do through the net of light. Uh, and this is how we will work. What we'll, we will do in a few minutes is uh, you will call the grandmothers and you will also call a head of the nature spirit family. And that in Western culture is usually called pan, pan, which means all, the, the all, uh, all knowing, all present uh, nature spirit who is over all the smaller nature spirits. By the way, there are millions and millions of nature spirits, tiny ones, large ones, having to do with earth, air, fire, water, and space, having to do with all of the elements. And so in order that you could have most efficiency in working with them, we call on Pan, or some of you may come from other cultures where you know of another name for the overall nature spirit. And then if so, call on that one. But because I don't know that, I will be voicing Pan as the, as the uh, head honcho, <laughs> the, the, the uh, overall leader of, of this team. You will have a team of uh, spirits, uh, earth spirits to work with, and your team will, will maintain a certain integrity. It will be certain ones each time. And then there will be different ones each time as well, depending on what is the task before you. For instance, if you're doing a lot of work with trees, there would be many, many naiads and, and tree spirits with you. If you're working with the waters, there would be some water spirits with you. If you're working with the fires, there would be uh, the fire spirits with you. So, and you don't need to know all of that. It would drive you crazy if you tried to figure it all out now. There's so much richness and there's so much variety within the elemental kingdom. So what we're gonna do is we're going to call in. I will voice Pan. You let it be uh, whoever is the head and, and asking Pan and the grandmothers to select for you the correct uh, nature spirits who will be on your team. You can count on them and they will be there. When we call on them, you may become aware of certain ones. 
So just keep your mind open and your heart open. And we're going to go in now. So calling on the radiant net of light, which is present within you, around you, throughout your life, throughout everything, the great holder of light, and with the net of light are the grandmothers who brought us to this point in order that we might help with this work of integration and communication. We ask now that the grandmothers and the net of light work with Pan or whoever's representing the overall of the elemental spirits to bring now to you the team that will work with you as you begin this work with nature and just observe. You may see things, you may feel things, you may intuit something, you may hear, taste or smell. Just notice what you experience now. Nature, by the way, the elemental spirits have been waiting a long time for this. So, if you are sincere in your desire to serve in this new way, they will respond. Let them come in now and just observe what it's like. They'll be all around you, in front of you, behind you. Just notice whatever you notice and don't censor yourself. Welcome them. Let them know that you want to begin to communicate with them. And you can let them know because it's absolutely honest that you really don't know how because we've been taught for so long that it's impossible, but that your heart is open to learning. You're eager to learn. And the net of light is busy connecting you now to your team, your heart to theirs, their hearts to yours. It's a natural flow because you all want the same thing. You want the highest good for all life. Each nature spirit wants that. And you, in your heart of hearts, also want that. And let that rest now. Over time, this communication with them will get easier and ever more natural and will fill your life with more goodness and joy than you've yet experienced. Just know that today we take the first step in this new relationship and let it rest there. There's nothing more for you to do. I'm gonna ask um, some of those on the panel now to share uh, what you've experienced in your life since we met in uh, Joshua Tree in the desert in March, when we first began to work with the nature spirits. So we have about five minutes for this sharing. So if there's something you, you would like uh, to share, please speak. I would like to share that uh, just before we started, uh, we sort of, prepared for this meeting. And uh, just now again, uh, you asked us to connect with nature and the team. And even before we started, that connection was instantly there. So for all of you who are now here and have called together your team, it's there. And you just need to call on it and it comes right back. Um, and it's it's a trust thing, like you know that the grandmothers are there. That's what I felt. It was like, 
right there. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks. I'm, I'm happy to share. Um, uh, just now, when, when Sharon led that um, meditation, um, I could feel, I, I have some particular spots around my neck and ears, and I could feel this, like, when she said, they're all around you, I can feel this, like, tickling. Um, I really sense that there were a lot of them. Um, but I also uh, had an image of uh, redwood trees, and um, about two weeks ago, I went with some other uh, people from this group and uh, to the Redwood Forest in Northern California, uh, Armstrong Woods, near where we live. And I got two messages, and one was to forgive myself, um, um, the related to my divorce from my kid's dad. And, and the other one, which really came through today very strongly, was stand tall. And the image I saw just now was um, when you're looking up, you know, straight, the, the, the redwood trees, just they just like, they stand straight, 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 straight up, reaching for the light. And how beautiful that is. Um, they're together, you know, they're together reaching for the light. And, uh, so that's what I got. Peggy. Hello, everyone. Sharon, you asked what we might have experienced since Joshua Tree. And what I'm aware of is that a big part of me has been living in my head because my life circumstances have um, required that. Uh, selling a house, those kinds of uh, big life events that require a lot of organization and thinking about and planning. When I have been quiet, trying to, oh, I'd say, recapture some of this sense of beauty flooding in, uh, allowing, um, allowing nature to take me over. I've become aware that I have to learn how to listen and perceive in new ways. So I won't say that I have the answer, but I will tell you a bit of what I experienced of the image that came to me as Sharon was leading us through this meditation. And it was as if I was watching a painting being applied to a canvas. At first it was a waterscape. I'm, I'm, I'm a very much a water person. And I was seeing all kinds of sea creatures swimming below the surface of the water. And then suddenly that scene moved to uh, a coastline. And it was, uh, it was a, a beautiful mountain scene in the background and all kinds of land creatures, deer and fo forest creatures coming down from the, from the, the side of the mountain uh, to, to stand and bask. And a, a brilliant, a brilliant um, light of sunlight above. So I, my, my mind created a beautiful painting. And uh, at some point, perhaps I'll have the skills to actually put it on a canvas. But for right now, I'm just saying, all right, well, this is perhaps a new way that I can perceive this work with nature. I've worked with nature for many, many years, uh, but it's, it's been in a sort of a formalized construct. So perceiving it and feeling it uh, more viscerally and in the body is really what I, I think. I think that's where the money is. I think that's where the great value is, and I have a lot of learning to do with that. But I, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very hopeful about my my painting that got created. Thank you, thank you, Peg. Does anybody else want to share something about this? I will share. I, I've got the anti Peggy event to share. That. 
for me, it has become very, very simple. It has become as simple as walking out into my garden and sitting on a, a bench and watching with great focus and dissolving myself into the observation of a hummingbird drinking nectar out of a, a flower. Or as you were speaking, Sharon, instead of the really big thing going on in my head, I immediately became really hyper-focused on the fact that I could hear the water in the fountain outside my window. And then a breeze picked up and it caressed my arm. And then I heard a bird call. And I guess what I want to say is it comes in so many forms, but it's really quite accessible and simple to just walk around your daily life and just watch this shift in your perception where you feel this uh, sense of oneness and dissolve. Looking, I took a walk the other morning um, at Heisler Park, the famous Heisler Park, and I looked out across the ocean and I took a deep breath and as I did, I felt the color of the ocean just moving into my lungs as I breathed. So maybe I'm just <laughs> losing my mind, but I'm just feeling so much more porous with the experience of my natural world. And I'm finding that it's not any more complicated than that for me personally. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. So that will be your joy to discover how nature begins to awaken you and it'll be unique to you. Uh, each of you will have your own experience of this. And uh, should you want to share any of that, just send us a little note because we'll be thrilled you know, to know how you're doing. And also any questions you have, go ahead. And if we can answer them, we will. <laughs> now, the next thing we're gonna do today uh, today, I wanted you to get most of the pieces of the template set up. So the next piece is to work with the great ascended beings. These are often the ones who we really revere. And these can be some of those whom we also worship. But it doesn't have to be that. These are beings who have lived uh, on earth and have achieved a oneness. Uh, they are part of this great love. They're, they have gone beyond their personalities into a heart-centered life where they, they live this one love and deep connection with all beings. Uh, they will be great teachers, uh, great healers, uh, great exemplars of morality and love in action. And so those who have headed up the world's variety of religions are part of this group. Uh, also myriad numbers that you've never heard of ever in your life are in this, in this uh, group of ascended beings. These are the holy ones beyond personality, beyond any of the limits of personality. These are the holy ones who live to serve and help. Um, these are the ones we often refer to as the great saints and sages and avatars. And again, there are millions of them. There are many, many, many who have lived over time. I just said there are millions and I'm thinking, are there really millions? I'm not sure, but I know there are many. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the uh, <laughs> wherewithal to be able to say that, but there are many, many of them. And so what we're gonna have you do again is these are going to also work with you. Certain ones of these will work with you. The grandmothers are part of this group. 
the great ascended beings. And of course, uh, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, Zoroaster, Mary, Bridget, Kuan Yin, many, 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 many of them. And many who you've never seen before or ever heard of. But the love they live, the love they are, is so vast and so great that they are happy to serve, happy to give. They look forward to that. So just observe, we're going to call them in a moment, and observe who comes to you. And as they come, greet them. And you may learn a little bit about them. You may be surprised. Uh, this uh, world we live in is much more vast than our minds can control or even describe. So it's a great adventure we're on. And this is part of it for you to meet uh, some members of your team who will be working with you as you begin to do this work to dissolve the barriers between humanity and nature. Those are false barriers because humanity is part of nature and nature is holy and part of divinity. And humanity and divinity and nature are all part and parcel of this one love. So we're moving into this great stance of one love, step by step in the perfect way for each of us. So close your eyes and just think of giving yourself this opportunity that it's okay with you to expand and it's okay with you to be happy and it's okay with you to spread that happiness and be part of that flow of goodness it's okay with you to be this walking blessing upon the earth. And you're really happy to learn and happy to accept help from the great beings who wish to help you. And so again, we ask that the presence of the net of light be firmly recognized. So just give a thought to your connection to the radiant net of light and your connection to the grandmothers who enfold you at all times, who are part of these ascended ones. And as the grandmothers and the net of light now <clears throat> to bring to you and call to you the great ascended beings who wish to help you do this work of oneness with nature and observe what you feel, what you notice, what you hear and see and sense. And don't censor yourself, but just observe. and experience how these ascended beings are interacting so beautifully with the spirits of nature with Pan and the spirits of nature. How happy they are and how at one they are in their communication, their communion with one another. And how happy they are and how relaxed they are also with the ancestral beings of light who are also present. And how happy with the grandmothers and with the overall 
and underlying presence of the radiant net of light. All these great ones, these beings, work with and through the net of light. And so do you. You come together to do this work. And feel yourself now rocked in and held by this oneness. And you may notice how this feels because your body is really registering this presence. You're so fully linked now. There's a greatness, uh, a greatness presence, present. And you are that. You are unified with the elemental beings, with the ancestral beings of light, with the grandmothers and the ascended beings. You are also unified with the elements themselves that comprise your body and comprise the elemental kingdom. It's a great, great soup of love of which you are part. And while you are here now, and you're just beginning to get to know your team, ask for a name or a symbol for this team. And it'll come to you. Observe it. Later, you're going to note that down, write it down, or describe it. But now just see it, feel it, hear it, this symbol or word for your team. And this is your information. It's not for anyone else. This is for you. And it's very handy if you ever want or need to call your team immediately, case of emergency of any kind, they will come instantly. So now just rest with your team, all aspects of it. your elemental helpers, the elements themselves, the ancestral beings of the light, and the ascended beings along with the grandmothers, all held within the net of light, including you. And again, I'm gonna ask the panel to briefly share anything you want to share. We're gonna run over about five minutes. So any of you who have to leave, go ahead and leave. We will, by the way, be doing this July 3rd, reviewing what we've done today and moving on to do some work with this team. But so I'd like to take about two minutes if one or two of you on the panel want to report something about this unifying with these ascended beings. Oh, Peg. <laughs> when I brought my attention to the top of my head and down through the central, central channel that we all have that lies along our spine, it was as if there was a, a great influx of energy and um, the rocking that I, I do sometimes uh, intensified. And what, what I have learned over the, over the past years is that 
when I when I need to get grounded and centered, I dr- I bring my energy to the middle of me, from the top of my head down to my the root, my root chakra, and out my feet. And when I do that, it's it's as if the the super highway is cleared, and things can flow as I think they're divinely orchestrated to flow for all of us, but we forget and and we forget to center ourselves is what I'm trying to say. And when I remembered, it made a big difference in my perception of being still and enlivened at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to, oh, Nadia, did you want to say something? I just wanted to add uh, that when calling in the ascended beings, I, I got several names and then uh, there was this, this strong, again, downpour of, of energy, like being flushed through somehow. Uh, and yeah, it was very, very powerful, very powerful experience, very physical in my whole body to feel it. Yeah, yeah. What I'd like to say is trust yourself as you do this process, as you call in the beings that help you. Um, We have a tendency to separate ourselves out in every way, and certainly from the divine. What's coming to mind right now is that trip that Catherine mentioned when a group of us went to Armstrong Woods to be among the Redwoods. There were two people there who'd not had this experience yet of working with the elemental spirits or working with the um, ascended beings. And so we just quickly gave them that meditation to do. And one just about, her eyes just about bugged out of her head. She said, I did that. And Jesus was in my face like that. (laughs) And I said, yep. Uh huh. <laughs> no exceptions. All of these beings love so much and they love to give. Uh, do not deprive yourself of any of these loving, beautiful souls, uh, great ones who come to you. It's not a mistake. <laughs> okay. So we will meet again on July 3rd to continue this work. Uh, We welcome your ideas, your thoughts, your sharings. Uh, Send them to us. We'll be happy to have them. And I'm just going to sing to you something for you to remember. Nadia. Just a quick question. For now, you just want us to know, get to know this team, and then next time we'll learn how to work with them? Yes, thank you for that. Yes, what I'd like you to do is now, between now and when we meet again, hang out with them. Call them in, call the grandmothers in the net of light and always let them bring in, you know, they will be the same, for the most part, they will be the same beings. And get to know them, hang out with them. And you can begin to work with them, you can ask them to begin to teach you how to dissolve any separation you may have had from nature and from the divine. That's an excellent thing to do. Uh, And then when we meet uh, July 3rd, we'll have a specific project that we can work on together so that it'll anchor it in practicality for you. But uh, you can't do this work wrong. There's no right or wrong to it. The grandmothers gave us this. And believe me, I could have never cooked this up. I wouldn't have any idea of it. So it's come from them because it's time that as many of us as are willing to do this work, step in now and do it. And before we started our meeting today, the uh, six of us, five of us, whatever we are, sat down together and we were meditating and we asked for the potential to be shown the potential of this work we just anchored today and that each of you got 
anchored within yourself. The potential is vast. Great, great goodness can and will come from this. Play with this as much as you like. This is for real. It's for real. These beings love you. They are here for you now. They are here for all of us now. Yeah, Catherine. Catherine. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, the reading that you had me do, the commitment to the earth, where, where can we find that? Is that in one of the books or is it on, on the website or? It's brand new. It will be uh, in the okay. next book, uh, but I think it should go uh, on Facebook and maybe on the website as well. Uh, I can put it in the comments underneath this video as well. Okay, that would be great. That would be great. Okay. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right. Then, oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you.